Hi, everybody. Sanitizers. Who doesn't know what that would be a talk about? Everybody knows. That's good. Because what I want to talk in this next half hour with dramatically less than 320 slides um, is about the idea that we can build LibreOffice with various sanitizers enabled um, and what benefit that brings to the project, but also to each one individually who tries to actually do that. So who of you does, who of you did try to build with sanitizers enabled? Encouraging. Um, by the end of the talk, I want you all to be excited to try it out. Um, so, the idea of these sanitizers, I think they, they, they started with Google um, quite a number of years ago, and then they first implemented it for Clang, um, and then that got also part, uh, ported to uh, GCC. Um, so experience there should be similar, so you can try that with either of those um, Windows. Microsoft compiler does not have that. Um, but at least the Linux ones. And, and I also only do it on Linux, um, so I'm not sure how out of the box we would have an experience on, on Mac, for example. I, I never actually tried that, or much of it. Um, so there's various of these uh, sanitizers that you can enable at compile time. Um, so the idea is always that you tell the compiler to, when it compiles the code, introduce more extra checks into the code um, that will then, at runtime, um, find interesting things about your program, um, where it, for example, violates um, the C or C++ standards regarding undefined behavior. So that's the, the, the one of the two classic uh, sanitizer uh, things that the sanitizers uh, check for. Um, anything that would evoke, when it is executed at runtime, undefined behavior. Um, so, but that also means that whenever you want to try these out, you need to first um, compile the whole project with these extra compiler switches so that it does instrument your code. Um, so that's different than, say, Valgrind, where you can, after the fact, just uh, quickly debug something um, so if you look at the, at the, at the um, undefined sanitizer things, um, there is quite a uh, large scale of, of, of things that it finds. Um, there is from the very benign things that, for example, um, that's a thing that occurs uh, quite often in the code and where we need some trivial uh, fixes to get beyond this sanitizer warning to silence the sanitizer warning that isn't that interesting in this case. There's a mem copy going on and you have two pointers and you have a size and often enough um, the code leading to that mem copy, if, there's, if the size is zero, then one of these pointers might well be a null pointer from your, from your logic, um, which doesn't hurt because if you're copying zero bytes, um, then it doesn't matter that one of the, the source or the target is, is null. Um, but the standard says, the C standard says, that functions like memcopy must not never be called with a null pointer. Um, so the sanitizer here dutifully tells you um, if you run into such a case that you're uh, violating some, some null pointer, null argument um, specifications that are spelled out for, for these functions. Um, and um, so the, the easy fix there is always that if, if size is zero, then you just skip the mem copy because you're not doing anything, and then it doesn't matter uh, if you would have touched an null pointer there. Um, and, and the compilers are always trying to exploit every kind of, of undefined behavior. So, um, so you need to, to think of it like um, you're trying to do your code as best you can, and there's the compiler waiting here on the side and watching, waiting for you 
to do any, write anything that evokes undefined behavior and then ha, grabs all your code from you because then it can prove that if, if, if you run into some code that does undefined behavior, um, your program is uh, exploding anyway. So it can remove all that stuff that, that can't happen because if it would happen, it would go to the undefined behavior. Um, so always watch out for anything that could evoke undefined behavior because your compiler is only waiting uh, to, to act on you and, and throw all your code in the bin and, and, and do nothing in the end. Um, so even for, for uh, trivial things like this one, um, it's always good to, to clean the code up, um, even for these cases. And then, of course, there's, a, as I said, a large spectrum of, of undefined behavior on the other and maybe it's these things where you have integers of fixed sizes, signed sizes, um, that do then tend to overflow in certain situations. For example, in Rider, we have this idea of this flying frames that are flying around somewhere, and uh, Bjorn might know that better than me, need to be anchored in some way, uh, and, 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 uh, but they need to get out of the layout uh, algorithms so they are moved far away somewhere uh, at, at a very large position. And that very large position used to be uh, that long max thing and these uh, values that, are compu that you're computing with are all of long type. Um, and, uh, but if you then start to move these around a bit further, then they may, might fall off the edge and overflow uh, and cause undefined behavior, the, compu uh, the, uh, the computations. So um, what we did there uh, at least a few years ago was to define that, that uh, far away thing where they get moved to, to be uh, now a 32-bit integer max thing so that on 64-bit on, um, at least, um, we are still computing with long, long is 64 uh, on, on Linux 64-bit. Uh, um, so these values are still very, very large, but not so large that they would overflow 64-bit uh, computations. On 32-bit, uh, uh, they would still overflow, but uh, um, at least for the, for the machines of the future, um, we don't get into these, into these issues anymore. Um, any other ideas of undefined things that might be caught by these? So signed, uh, unsigned integers, for example, don't cause undefined behavior when they overflow. That's defined to wrap around. So there is an additional flag you could enable to also find overflow of uh, unsigned integers, but that, of course, would uh, give you many false positives, so isn't, isn't that effective uh, to check for. And then there's other cases like you're, you're shifting to large uh, amount or un other undefined behaviors. If you have a function pointer and you're doing a call through that function pointer and you're calling you reinterpreted, reinterpreted a function pointer to some other function pointer with different arguments, then it will warn about that. Um, or a floating point division by zero or integer division by zero, or when you try to cram a too large floating point value into an, an integer value, that is also undefined behavior. So among the, the integer types, you get this, this uh, truncation thing, but if you want to cram a large um, floating point into an integer that also causes, that also um, is not allowed and, and is undefined. And there's uh, a number of these as well, especially in these areas, like th these newer um, drawing layer things that operate on floating point um, positions, x, y positions, why the older tool stuff uh, still uses the, the, the integer variables and that the at the, um, at the borders of these two where they come together, there's uh, occasionally cases where we get warnings from, the, from these. So next up is the uh, address sanitizer, which um, warns about quite something different. Um, it warns about any case um, where you're trying to access memory 
that you're not supposed to access, like you have an array of some size and you're trying to address out of bounds for that array, or you have um, some heap um, memory that you're already deleted, probably in some other thread, um, and now you're re-accessing it, um, or stack use after free also, um, where you have some, some point or some reference to some local variable on some heap frame, um, and uh, you return that, and then later on you pass that to somewhere else, and that dereferences it. And uh, just as I did these slides, I ran into one of these. So if you move in the, in the sidebar, you can move the slides up and down, and if you move them too far away, then uh, you ran into a stack use after return, because somebody the other day had changed um, some boost bind to some lambda function and then passed in the, the, the pointer, the, 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 the coordinates as a reference where it uh, was a reference to some other place on the heap, uh, on, on the stack, sorry. Um, so this one especially is, is uh, very similar in what it can find to Valgrind, um, but again, how it finds it is completely different. So what Valgrind does is you have a binary, you have your compiled binary, um, and then Valgrind interprets that binary um, and tries to reconstruct where are you addressing memory and uh, is that a good or a bad addressing of memory. Um, and uh, with, a, with a address sanitizer, what you do instead is you instrument your code up front so that every access to memory that happens in the code whenever the compiler uh, writes out a load or store instruction, it adds code around that instruction to, to check whether that instruction, it, uh, whether the access to that address um, would be valid from what it knows about how your, your memory is laid out. Um, what this also doesn't find um, compared to Valgrind is um, users of uninitialized memory. So when you read from a variable that you haven't assigned to, um, then it doesn't detect that. There is some other sanitizer for that, the memory sanitizer that is supposed to find all um, users of uninitialized memory, but the drawback with that one is that you would need to compile your complete software stack with that. So um, with the others, you get away with just compiling your own code and uh, libraries like the, the C library. If they are not instrumented, of course, you don't find issues in that code, uh, but it doesn't hurt. You'll still find all the issues in your own code. Um, but with a memory sanitizer, you would need also the, the system libraries to be instrumented. Um, and that's a big drawback uh, to get that uh, productively working. So I never tried that out in, in, in earnest. Um, there is supposed to be a glibc um, library version that is available, um, but that's a place where, where um, it starts to get uh, difficult to, to get these things set up. Um, so in some, but in some places, you still get benefit from the sanitizers because if you have an uninitialized value, it is often neither zero nor minus one, nor, but, but some random value. Um, and the address sanitizer also initializes any, val any uh, memory to uh, preset values, like this uh, 160, for example. So if a Boolean value is read that is uninitialized, then the, the value that is actually read out of the byte is 160. And that can't be a valid value for a Boolean, so the undefined, uh, uh, so the undefined behavior sanitizer kicks in and says, this is an invalid value for a Boolean. It also does that for enums. So if you have an enum with just three values, um, then it knows that only two to uh, zero to three are valid values for these. Um, so in some of the places, you still get the benefit indirectly um, of, the, of the sanitizers telling you that uh, there's an effect of you uh, accessing an invalid memory, uninitialized memory. Uh, one more sanitizer that's out there is the threat sanitizer. 
um, that's supposed to detect data races, but if you unleash that on our code base, um, just like if you do with Helgrind, which does the same for, for the Valgrind suit, um, you find lots of them, lots of them, lots of them. And uh, nobody bothered to, to clean these up. Um, so there is, uh, often it's uh, harmless uh, reports that, for example, you're, you have different code paths that can lock mutexes in different orders. Um, and that can, of course, lead to deadlocks, but to, to clean all these up that don't, in practice, lead to deadlocks um, would be quite some work. So there's lots of work that would be needed to spend up front um, to get this working. It would be great if we had that um, working fine so that new issues we could find there, but would need somebody to, to step in and, 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 and do the upfront work. Also, with the address sanitizer, what you can also check with that is uh, leaked memory. So by w when the process terminates, it tells you a long, long, long list of things um, that, would, uh, that, that would leak. Um, again, to get this list to zero would mean lots of work. Um, so luckily, there's an option you can set for the sanitizer a runtime option that tells it to not emit all these uh, leak informations. So we do have leaks, but it's mostly harmless if you exit um, to have to have uh, leaks, so we, we don't bother that much about them. And um, all these sanitizers and all their options are all very well documented um, at that URL there. So if you want to try them out. So performance uh, of this thing, as I said, um, compared to Valgrind, um, Valgrind does the, the analyzation of the code and the instrumentation, the, the, the interpreting of the code at runtime and is known to be quite slow. Um, these sanitizers are reasonably fast. So for example, it took me a while to get this presentation up, um, up front. Uh, but now that it's up, uh, it works reasonably well. Um, so there's no, I mean, it's not that much to, to uh, switch slides. Um, I tried to edit the slides with this, and that was a bit, uh, a bit very slow, the, the cursor movement, for example. I think it's worse in, in, in Impress than in Riders, so it must be something in the edit engine that we use in, in Impress and Calc. Um, that slows things down there. So there's a, like, a, like a constant uh, multiplier that uh, um, affects the, the, the speed of your code executing. It's like uh, on, on, the, on the sanitizer um, documentation pages, they talk about like two, two time uh, uh, slowdown. Um, it always depends on, on your workload. Um, and what, what I often do is, when I have a, some bug to reproduce or, or, or something to, to try out, um, I do fire up the, the sanitized uh, UBSAN and ASAN sanitized uh, LibreOffice on my Linux machine on, the, on this laptop. And that most of the time, it just works, works fine. And you, before you get to the actual bug from the bug report, you run into another sanitizer reporting, so it's a double win. You, you fix two bucks for the price of one in these cases. And also the, the make check, I do, I do it on that box. Uh, make check also does um, lots of um, issues, lots of uh, as office processes um, to, to test uh, um, the, the various code paths. Um, and that works, uh, it doesn't run out of memory or something. Um, so ASIN needs shadow memory um, to keep track of what memory areas you have uh, reserved, so it, uh, it's, uh, you have in use. So it reserves terabytes of memory, but doesn't actually touch them. Um, so with Linux over committing, it, it all pans out fine. And on a 16 uh, um, gigabyte machine, it, it, it works reasonably to do an eight, eight fold make check eight threads in parallel, eight processes in parallel. Um, and uh, how do we use it? So we do have a, one of the tinderboxes does, 
I think daily, by now daily builds, um, that most of the time run green, sometimes run into issues, sometimes run into random check failures. So we do have some of the checks that are apparently um, picky about um, timings and, and because we are running very slow or rather slow in this case, some of the notorious tests fail more often on these than, than on other machines. Um, but it's a success story overall, so we do find, find issues with these in, in, in freshly written code. Um, the, sanitize, the, the fuzzers, of course, are also very happy about the sanitizers because fuzzers need to decide, I have some input here, does that exhibit good or bad behavior in the program under test? And um, one notion of bad behavior is just crashing, Zach faulting. Another good indicator of bad behavior is if that code runs into undefined behavior or there's some address uh, operations um, that don't lead to crashes but are otherwise bad and are found by ASAN. Um, so these use these. Um, what I started um, the other day is uh, to use all these uh, bug documents that we have um, that Qualen also uses uh, for other testing um, and pipe them all through these convert to, for example, convert to PDF um, functionality of Office. So I take each of these thousands of documents one by one, pass them through convert to PDF and see if there's any, any issues with those. And I find quite some with these. So I'm not, not yet finished even with the, with the first round of, of piping all, all documents, all test documents through there, or bug documents. And of course, as I said, developer dog fooding. Um, I use it myself quite often for, for just uh, what, what I would call my office use. I'm not a user of Office, and when I write a uh, slideshow like this, I, I, I stumble into issues there because I never tried before. But when I reproduce a bug, for example, then I always oh, very often use a, a sanitized um, thing. And I would encourage you all to um, try this as well. Um, there is some stumbling blocks to trying it yourself. Um, as I said, Clang and GCC, I only use Clang. I'm not, not sure how well it works with GCC, but I guess it's about the same situation there. Um, we, not yet, but in a few days, I hope, we'll require Clang 9, which is the latest Clang version that is not yet out, so they're at release candidate four by now. They want it to be out in end of uh, August. The good thing about Clang 9 is that it contains some improvements that makes things on our end very much easier. So the problem is that um, the undefined behavior sanitizer needs to have access to the runtime information, the RITI, uh, for many types, the RITI symbols. Um, and there are some s two schools of thought how to compare two type informations, two RITIs. Um, and the way that Clang does it um, needs to have more access to these symbols from outside of the library. So we needed to compile with some cheesy MS Compat flag, but that has uh, problems in other places. And now in Clang 9, we've we fixed Clang to um, also emulate the GCC version of how it compares RITI pointers. And that no longer needs that MS Combat thing, and that no longer needs lots of this uh, if-def code that, that we have uh, still in our code base. And I want to throw it out. I wanted to wait until Clang 9 is officially out, um, and by that time I'll probably throw away that um, old code. Um, so if you're not living on trunk, uh, but I think most of the people who are using sanitizers or the, the uh, LO plugin anyway are, are living on, on Clang Trunk, um, so they don't experience that that much. But that might be a stumbling block for a, for a short duration until all the distros pick up uh, Clang 9 then anyway. Uh, and of course, we have uh, not that optimal documentation because, as always, when it's just a thing that only a few people care about, uh, then nobody bothers to get into writing documentation. So what you need to do to, to try it out is um, set the CC and CXX variables you 
put into your AutoGAN input um, to just add these whatever sanitizers you want. Um, that um, sets some flags internally in configure, um, which are uh, maybe strangely named. So whenever you run into one of these uh, disable or enable runtime optimizations um, checks in the code or in the configure, that's where we check our CC or CXX variables, whether they have sanitizers enabled. And then uh, in some places in the code, like for example, when we then start Java, we tell it not to, to Java in the process, then we tell it not to do jitting because the jitted code, like for Valgrind, uh, is, is hard to, to analyze for the sanitizers and would uh, then probably cause issues. There's also another issue with uh, with the, the undefined symbols. Um, so these, whenever you compile a library with the sanitizers enabled, then it calls into a sanitizer helper library, which is com linked into the, into the executable. So the, the individual libraries are not linked against that. The executable must be. Um, so if you use sanitizers for your daily work, have them enabled in your daily builds, and you add some functionality to a library that needs a third library that you didn't link to against. Um, this build, your sanitized build, will not tell you. Only when you then upload that to Garrett, then the other compilers will start, or linkers will start to complain because you have an undefined reference. And we need to disable these undefined reference checks due to how um, the, the sanitizers work. Um, one thing that used to not work, and thanks to Noel pointing it out, no works, is that you can build your code not only with enable debug, enable dbg util, but also with the disable, so the full optimization of the code. Then, of course, the debugging is less effective because um, your code has got, got restructured by the compiler. But um, there was one sanitizer, one undefined behavior sanitizer. Um, that complained uh, about more things when it is running in, in uh, optimized mode. And you need to set uh, to environment variables. Um, oh, what I forgot there is to tell it to um, not, do the, not do the leak detection, as I showed on the, on, on the previous slide. So there's um, some more things to set up. And that's it. We're running out of time. Um, so it now asks me to do this. And I added a little Easter egg in here. And uh, once I click on this, it, uh, I added a dummy integer division by zero in there. And I um, trigger that when I click on the exit from the slideshow thing. And then it shows us. So the, the, the bottom part is the whoop. Here it starts, runtime error division by zero. So this is proof that uh, the slowness at the start of the presentation was because this is a sanitized build actually doing its work. Thank you.